Hello, I'm Momo. Welcome to my first informative guide to Sky. This video is mainly for people who are still new to Sky, but might also have some useful tips for experienced players too. The topics that I'm going to cover in here will hopefully help you to control your flight and movement better. So, come on and hop on, buddy! Let me guide you through how to fly better in sky. Before we continue, let's switch to two hands control. Tap on the top right corner of your screen, hit the settings icon, scroll to the right, tap on control, and then select two-handed mode. If you prefer to move in one hand control, then by all means, please stick to what you like. However, this video is based on two hands control, so some things might not apply to you. Please also do note that as Sky is a constantly updating game, there are some points in this video that may become obsolete in the future. Now that we are all set up, the first part of this guide is about land movement. Flying in sky is an essential part of the game, but for a newbie with barely any wing power, you have to travel mostly on foot first. There are three types of movement, two of which you might have already known by now. Walking or running by controlling the directional pad, hopping by flicking your finger across the screen, and skipping. To skip around, pay attention to the star icon on the bottom right corner of the screen, right here. When you tap on it, your character hops forward, just like flicking. Run around as per normal with the directional pad and tap on the star icon to start skipping. Here's a clip to compare the three types of movement. As you can see, skipping is the fastest way to move about when you want to save your wing power. It's also easier to use compared to flicking. So, if you like to move on quickly, skip along, buddy! After getting more flight power, flying can still be a bit tricky. Certain areas that are harder to reach might make you use up all your energy. And you still can't get up there. There are two types of flight modes. Understanding them will help you to save as much wing power as possible. Here, I'm back in the same spot with only two wing energy as well. But this time, knowing better about flying, I can make it! The button that toggles between them appears on the right side whenever you're up in the air. I call them gliding and flapping. As a basic guide, switch to glide mode right after you lift off to boost yourself forward faster. When it's time to land, switch back to flat mode and gently lower yourself down. Besides the toggle button, there are other visual cues to identify which mode you are in. When you're gliding, the wing or cape icon at the top of your screen is extended. You leave behind trails of air and move forward faster. When you're flapping, the wing icon is contracted. You don't leave any trails and move forward slower. I'll explain the individual uses next. Gliding When you glide, you move much faster compared to flap, but also control less accurately. In places with lots of wind, like here in Prairie's Bird's Nest, you can save a lot of wing power by gliding with the winds. Often so, people will flap up to the top of the towers. However, you can save all that energy if you know where to lift off and use the winds to carry you up, like so. By doing this, I barely wasted any energy. 
gliding is also a great way to speed down from high places. It is harder to control, but it's about two times faster than slowly falling down. When it comes to landing, gliding into ledges and corners will make you automatically hop up. If the area is spacious enough, you can crash land straight into them too. However, control your movement so you don't slide too far off. Obviously, this isn't gonna work for small spaces. You have to switch to the other mode instead. Flapping. Besides getting up to higher places, switching to flap when you're about to land lessens your chance of falling off. By stopping or slowing down this way, you can land just about anywhere and do silly things like that. Changing directions or making U-turns can be done in both flight modes. For gliding, you have to quickly flick to spin around and doing it multiple times until you're in the right direction. Personally, I prefer the flat method as it's a lot easier to control. For flapping, just switch to flap while you're in mid-air, change your direction, and continue on. Either way, it helps to turn the camera screen so you know exactly where you're going. Whew, well. With these tips, it shouldn't be too difficult now to get these candles at Valley. With enough practice, I hope that you will feel less struggle and fly more efficiently. The next trick is THE game changer for me. <sighs> the bird call spirit. I can never forget how frustrating it was to get this. Ledges and steps may seem like a lot of trouble at first, but they are actually a lot easier to work with than you think. When you flick in the direction of a step, your character will leap forward and land pretty accurately. It's my favorite way of hopping around to spots and places that don't require flying, even though there may be large gaps in between. You can also tap on the star icon as long as your character is facing in the right direction. Just keep tapping to get up ladders or straightforward posts. While in the air and in flap mode, you can use the same flicking method to get to places, especially when you're about to fall off. I call this step hopping, cause you're stepping up with a hop. Whenever I misjudge my landing, Flicking ensures that I don't end up falling off. The distance to step hop is also fairly generous. I highly recommend you try step hopping. It will really make a big difference to your flying experience. You now know the three main things to help make your journey in sky easier. However, there still be times when you run out of energy, especially if you're a solo player who is just starting out. In this last section, I will list the things that will help restore the sparkles of your cape back to life. When it comes to restoring energy, in general, clouds and anything that provides light or warmth will regenerate your energy at varying speeds. I'll skip explaining the more commonly known ones such as candles, lamps, glowing things, and fires. Number 1. Returning home. If you ever find yourself drained out of light and stuck in your location with no warmth around, you can always hate home anywhere. There are three ways to do so. In the emotes list, select home. You can also do the same under settings. And if you are near it, you can use the return shrine. Upon returning home, your light will be immediately replenished. You can then continue your journey via the shrine again. Number 2. The Constellation Rock Back at home, here is the Constellation Rock. 
Strangely enough, the left half of it has absolutely no effect. However, here on the right half, there's an invisible power that refills your light instantly. Number 3. Spirits Within the start of each portal, you find the spirits whom you've already met standing by their respective graves. They provide warmth as well, so if you ever happened to somehow lose light right at the start, just get close to them. Traveling spirits and quest spirits do the same too. Number 4. The Butterfly Emote There are three ways that butterflies can heal you. Firstly, in certain spots, standing close to them will trigger them to repeatedly swirl around you until you are full. Secondly, when you tap and hold on yourself, you let up a deep call which attracts butterflies to you. They'll heal you just a little bit and also boost you up. Lastly, the butterfly emote. It's probably not a well-known fact, but when you use the butterfly emote while you're close to any butterflies, one of them will flutter to you and land upon your fingertips. Not only is that very endearing, your butterfly pal also heals you fairly quickly. Number 5. Rainbirds. They are most useful here in Hidden Forest. When you fly with the rainbirds, touching them will give you some energy back. So, if you continuously fly with them, reaching that one particular wing light in forest becomes a lot more possible. Number 6. The warmth of a friend or a stranger. Even if you can't find a friend to tag along with you, there's still plenty of solo players out there. If you come across a great stranger, take note of the light in their capes. If there are black stars, that wing power is empty. To help them quickly recover, do a deep call and it will instantly recover a few stars. Usually, a few beepity boops will do the trick. But not in this case. Unfortunately, during this period, it doesn't work as well as it used to. It might be a bug that hopefully will be fixed soon. Alternatively, sharing candlelight also helps. Energy will be gradually restored, but you have to reveal yourself to them first. That's why having at least one friend with you will make your journey a lot easier. While you're in flight, your friend will also continue to warm you up as long as they are holding hands with you or are up on your back. And it accumulates. The more friends you've got, the faster your energy will regenerate. Number 7. Spells You can get random spells from most spirits. They have to be unlocked and usually cost 5 normal candles. After purchasing them, the bottom caption shows what you have acquired. They are then located at the end of the emotes list. Some of them can restore energy. After completing the quests at the Forgotten Ark, you can also buy spells there. You'll be able to access three item shops where you can trade candles for spells. The first shop at the end of the Ark is a potions shop. It sells instant recharge potions. Two for five normal candles and one for one ascended candle. The instant recharge potion is a one-time use. As the name implies, it instantly recharges your cape. Let's continue on to the next door, a spell shop at the mid-bottom level of Eric. There's a fast recharge spell that lasts for 10 minutes. It affects you and any nearby friends. The timer starts counting down for everyone and continues to tick even after exiting the game. 
To check how much time is left, open up your emotes list and check the bottom left corner. The fast recharge requires you to be close to a source of light in order for it to work. Your energy will be recovered much faster than usual until the spell wears off. Finally, the scroll shop at the very end sells bonfires. After confirming that you like to use the spell, you can set up a bonfire anywhere by dragging out the icon from the top. To complete it, go ahead and light up a nice fire. Up to four people will then be able to sit down together and chit chat for as long as until the bonfire is gone. Anyone who warms themselves up by the fire right in the middle will also have their light restored. The bonfire is a great emergency too and disappears when you leave the map. And that's all! We have finally come to the end. Yay! If there are any other tips which I might not have mentioned or tricks that you'd like to learn more about, feel free to share them in the comments. Thank you for coming this far. I hope this video has been useful to you. Well then, until the next one, take care, keep safe, and stay peachy!